Coming up, we have stories about family secrets, passive aggressive neighbors, divorce drama, spicy reward stories, and of course, all the latest cake drama. That's right, this channel runs on the world's most infinite renewable resource. Drama, no shortage of it. This is from True Off My Chest, and it is titled, My Wedding Was Ruined. I've debated about posting this, but I have to rant to someone. Me, 23 female, and my now husband, Josh, 26 male, had our wedding last week. At first, everything was beautiful. I got married to my high school sweetheart and was so happy. It felt like my fairy tale come true. I felt like a princess. While I'm taking photos with my bridesmaids, I see Josh's cousin, Nicole, with a girl, I'll call her Sarah, I'm unfamiliar with. She seems non-talkative, but is friendly to me at first. We finish our photos and go inside to relax and chat before I walk down the aisle. A long while later, after the vows were exchanged, I bump into Sarah while on my way to the food table. She's clearly intoxicated, but through her slurred speaking, I could hear her ranting about how crowded the venue was, but then it escalates. I was getting food for my mom when she said to me that she's surprised Josh married someone like me because Josh could do better than me. I tried to laugh it off and I told her I was very lucky to have him. The interaction left me feeling upset, but I brushed it off as her just being drunk and I started drinking too and soon forgot about it. Time goes past and I'm feeling good. Me and my husband along with all of my guests were dancing. Suddenly, I hear a crashing sound near the food table and all of us rush over to see what was happening. I see Sarah on the ground sobbing hysterically and Nicole was trying to calm her down. She had completely smashed my wedding cake and ripped the decorations. No! Okay, okay, hold on. Time, time out, time out. So, drunk B slurs something about, well, I'm surprised they married you, he'd do better than you. Like, okay, whatever. Later on, drunk B smashes the wedding cake? Drunken accident? I think not. Leave the cake alone. My heart was broken to see my wedding cake completely destroyed, but I tried to ask what was wrong, and Sarah started screaming and cursing me. I was confused and drunk, so I started shouting back and ordered my husband to kick her out. He didn't want to and told me she should be allowed to stay since she was a friend. I argued with him and told him that she's ruined my wedding. Okay, first of all, for hubby here, of like five minutes being like, no, she should stay. My bride. She just smashed our wedding cake. She gets to stay, right? Mmm, you screwed up, dude. It eventually took my husband and Nicole to get her under control and convince her to go home. Nicole left with Sarah, and when my husband came back, he looked angry with me. He completely blew me off for the rest of the night, and I could tell the atmosphere was now awkward for all of my guests. The next day, my husband lectured me about how I hurt Sarah's feelings and demanded I apologize to her. We argued, and he slept on the couch. Things eventually cooled down, so I tried to talk to him about it the following days, but he shut me down and just told me I was being overly dramatic about the situation. You get more of these, dude. I've never even seen Sarah until my wedding. I have no clue why she would lash out like that. I'm hurt that my husband doesn't see my perspective. Even though she was drunk, she ruined my special day, and now I can't think of the happy memories I have because I can only think of that incident. Sorry for the long read. Thanks for listening. This is garbage, and I can't help but think like, like so many of you probably are right now, someone that OP bride here did not recognize and had never seen before, hubby rushes up and is like, she's a friend. She gets to stay. Is there history? Hmm? Because that would explain a lot. That would explain the comment. That would explain her smashing the cake. That would explain hubby sticking up for her. And if that's the case, he gets more of those. And he gets one of these. And then to come back in and let's say that's not the case. Let's entertain that for a second. Even if that's not the case, he just thinks she's there. So she's got to be a friend somehow. Him not siding with his wife when this lady drunk as shit had just smashed their freaking wedding cake is a big red flag. And then coming back in and being shitty to her the rest of the night, their wedding night. And then the rest of that week, what are you doing, bro? Have a conversation at least now. OP being hammered and just choosing to engage by shouting right back. And she was intoxicated too. I'm sure there were different routes to be able to handle that. But if somebody smashed my wedding cake because they were drunk and they had said what she just said, I'd be pissed too. I am. I'm concerned about a connection with hubby and Sarah here. And I'm concerned that if there's no connection there, that he's just, he's, 
Not a team. Not a team. Uh, OP, <laughs> NTA for the reaction here. Either way, whether there was some kind of connection between them or not, NTA, there's a problem with your with your new hubby. I don't know how deep of a problem it is yet, but it's a problem. Ah. Am I the astronaut if I blow the lid on the family secret and message the whole family? Well, this sounds juicy. I recently found out who my bio father is after 36 years and now I'm blocked from his social media. I female 36 was raised by my mother. It's a strained relationship and we have been no contact for nine years now. I was always told my parents were young and when my mother fell pregnant, he ran for the hills. I'm happy and settled in my life with my husband and four kids, but a part of me always wondered. A few months ago, I did an ancestry DNA test and found him on social media. I sent a message and did some digging. Found out I have a half brother and sister. He didn't respond, so I tracked down his two sisters. The first sister, let's say Mary, said she's no contact with him and I should stay away. She didn't know I existed. The second sister, let's call her Betty, said he's in poor health at the moment and I shouldn't try to contact him. I never told her who I was or why I reached out. I only asked if he could contact me. So her message back made me think she knew exactly who I was and he had seen my message to him. I was sad for days thinking, is he sick? What if he's dying and I never get to know my other family? That was three weeks ago. Today I tried to send another message and I was blocked by him. Go ahead and trigger this. I have another account, so I checked on that one and to my surprise, he doesn't seem sick at at all. In fact, he and his other two grown kids just had a lovely holiday abroad with all of their happy families. I'm angry. All I wanted was to be acknowledged and introduce myself to my siblings. If they didn't want a relationship, that's fine, but I just want to know where I'm from. I feel rejected all over again. I wish I didn't do the stupid test, but I would have always wondered. Maybe if I had a good childhood with my mother, I wouldn't have cared, but it was horrible. I've since found out he's not a great person and has struggled with alcohol all of his life. I'm not even sure if the rest of them know I exist. I'm angry, hurt, and rejected and can't let it go. Should I blow the lid on the family secret and message the whole family? Or should I just be thankful for my wonderful husband and children and move on with my life? I just want closure. This sucks. I am so sorry that you have to go through anything like this. This is... Uh, uh, and, and the initial question that you asked here was, uh, am I the ask on if I blow the lid on the family secret and message the whole family? So now, I'm assuming you mean his entire family. The unfortunate part here is that here at the end, I think you, you define what you want. You want closure. I don't know that meeting him is going to achieve that. I don't know that messaging the entire family is going to achieve that. I think that what has happened so far has given you enough information to know that th that this family is never going to get you, never going to give you what you want, even if that's just closure. I, and I also think that, that the response that they've given you with just completely shutting doors and just trying to avoid contact is is a form of providing closure there because it is a, you know this guy has struggled with substances his entire life. Alcohol is the one you know about. You know that, that there was some kind of warning issued to the siblings, your half-siblings, because of how they played defense here and lied to you about it. You know that, you know he doesn't want to hear from you. And for whatever reason, it's garbage. He's an ass con one. There's no doubt about that. I think just that, just knowing that he's a shit person, hopefully would be enough to be like, yeah, you know what? I, I know. Now I know. I know that this is a shit person that I don't want in my life. I don't want in my children's life. I don't want to be connected with my family at all. And my fear for you here is that if you keep digging, you're going to find more darkness. You know what I mean? This is, this is, you already know, you already know that this well is poisoned. So, so why go deeper into it? You're just going to find more pain. I understand the urge. I mean, I don't, I don't understand because I, I have not gone through that, but, but I understand that you, that you have this need to find out that you have this need to discover more, but you know enough right now to know that there's just more pain behind those doors and that he's a garbage person that doesn't deserve the title of being your father, doesn't deserve to be connected to your life in any way, shape or form. And hopefully that's enough. It sucks, but you created your own tribe and focusing on them and, and trying to create the kind of experience that you never got to have would be the ideal thing to pour focus into. I get it though. And I think that this scar is going to haunt you forever. How much is up to you?
Am I the astronaut for not carrying on a neighborhood tradition in the house I recently purchased? Interesting. I purchased my home a couple of years ago. My neighborhood is mostly families with children, as there is both an elementary and middle school in walking distance. I am child free. The previous owners of my house, the Smiths, were a beloved couple in the community. She was the elementary school librarian and he the middle school health teacher. He was also the announcer for high school football games. They had one daughter who was killed by a drunk driver in the late 90s when she was 16, and it was a huge thing. The high school theater is named in her memory because she was active in the theater and choir programs. When they retired, they named the high school football field after Mr. Smith. The Smiths moved to Florida. I bought their house. Apparently, the Smiths also loved Halloween and went all out building elaborate themed haunted houses in their garage every year, sometimes even going into their home for the kids to walk through during trick-or-treat. Planning started as soon as the school year ended, and Mr. Smith spent all summer building structures and props for it. They would take suggestions from the neighbor kids on what the theme should be. I did not know any of this when I purchased the home, but people have been sure to let me know since I moved in. Last year was my first trick-or-treat. I was excited to pass out cans of pop, something I remember getting a couple times as a kid and was thinking it was so cool. I wore a witch hat and a little battery-operated light-up cauldron from Spirit Halloween and dressed my dog up like a dragon and had a little setup at the end of my driveway with different buckets for the different pops. All night, everyone was commenting about how amazing the haunted houses used to be, reminiscing about the different themes, how nice it was that the Smiths did it for the neighborhood kids year after year even though they didn't have kids, how much the Smiths were missed. I had people who told me they drove in from other neighborhoods because of this haunted house and they were so disappointed it was no longer there. This probably sounds stupid, but I was kind of feeling crappy by the end of the night. For the past several weeks, my neighbors, kids and adults, have been asking me if I'm going to do a haunted house this year. One woman even offered that her husband would help me. Then today, someone wrote an anonymous post on our neighborhood Facebook group about how much the neighborhood has changed with so many new people moving in, how the kids have had such a hard time in the past couple of years because of COVID, and how it's important that we come together as a community and help them make memories because of their time lost. They specifically called out the haunted house on my street, in addition to a couple of other neighborhood events, block party, 4th of July bike parade that went away during COVID and never came back as examples. I read the Facebook post to my mom. She said that I am being a grumpy old lady. I don't know how hard it is to be a parent and thinks I should try to do something like the Smiths used to to keep the tradition going. I want to be a good neighbor, but I'm kind of annoyed by the post and don't feel that I should be obligated to spend my time or money to build a haunted house or generally give strangers access to my house, even if the previous owners were generous in that way. So, am I the astronaut for not wanting to carry on this tradition? Potentially relevant, while people in this neighborhood do decorate their houses more than any other place I have lived, lights and fake graveyards most prominent, a couple of the more decorated examples include a 12-foot Home Depot skeleton and someone had a Stranger Things themed yard display last year. No one I have seen has any sort of walkthrough experience. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh... It's like she moved into Wisteria Lane. And do I lose points for knowing that? Yes, it was a desperate housewife. My thought here is 100% NTA. The fact that the people in the neighborhood know the Smiths moved. If they were that beloved in the community, the neighborhood knows damn well that they moved to Florida. When you move into a home, when you buy a home, you do not inherit the the obligations of any kind of decorating or traditions that the previous owners had. If these neighborhood people care so damn much, why don't one of them spool it up in their house? Why don't they turn their garage into it? And someone else takes it over. Yeah, the Smiths didn't have kids because they lost their child, which is terrible. But also, she worked in the library. He was connected with announcing at the football games. They had a connection to the kids. They didn't have to have kids to have a connection with the kids, to have a connection with the school community. OP has none. The shit part here is that neighborhoods like this aren't going to be so forgiving when you don't do it. But you know what? F them. Mind your damn business. Get off my lawn. Not saying that's the route that you have to take or should take, but you have a choice here. You have a choice to either say, A, okay, I really want to be a part of this neighborhood community. I really want to be close-knit with them. I really want to be a part of this. And if that is the case, this is the cost. If not doing it yourself, offering to help someone else do it, or or asking for, for more help 
help, like offering your house to let them do it there. Or just something, something. If you want to be a part of that, it's never going to be like it was before. And they have to accept that. And again, I think if they care that much about it, one of them needs to take up the mantle. You didn't know these people. You didn't know no connection to this whatsoever. If one of them cares enough, they need to take up the mantle. You, out of everyone in this neighborhood, are the least obligated to take up that mantle. Maybe that's the conversation. Maybe maybe you need to, to clap back in this, this neighborhood Facebook group and be like, look, I bought this house. I just moved in here. I don't have any kids. I have no connection to the school at all. You guys knew them. Why doesn't someone else take it up? And watch them all backpedal. Oh, 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 what helps you do it? It needs to be in the same house. No. <laughs> DIY Dylan, what was, what was the message here? Somebody said it was genius, so I got to go back and look it up now. Can't find it. The community, H. Lynn, the community can come up with a committee to do it all together if they want. But NTA. That's what I'm saying. It's like she didn't even have, LP doesn't even have a connection to the to the community here. Just moved here. I, th- I think, yeah, the first question you have to answer yourself is, is, like what role do I want to play in this neighborhood? And you have every right to stand up and be like, look, I'm not doing this. Like you guys can do something if you want to, and I'll do what I can, but I'm not going to carry on a tradition for someone who was way more hooked into the community than I am. This story is titled, Am I the Asconaut for Reporting My Pool Guy to His Supervisor? For what should have been a normal Wednesday, it's been anything but. I've been cleaning up messes all day and it's related specifically to my story. So here it goes. Yesterday afternoon, I received a text from my pool service that my pool filter needed cleaning. So, okay, I said they could come by tomorrow morning. Wednesday morning rolls around and I'm napping after dropping off my daughter at school. I'm passed out tired as I've been sick with bronchitis and have bruised ribs and a very painful back. I knew the pool guy was coming, so while I napped, I made sure my two puppies were inside so as to not disturb him. I woke up to a call on my phone and it's from the pool guy telling me he was just here and that I needed a $600 panel for my filter to turn on properly. Properly. I politely declined and reminded him that he was only there to clean the filter. He proceeded with a very rude undertone and told me my pool will turn green with algae because he didn't know how to turn the filter on. I let him know that my husband knows how to manually turn it on and will proceed to do so when he's home from work today. He rudely acknowledged this and hung up on me. I got up and put my puppies outside in the backyard to potty. They're eight months old. We have a gate that separates the pool from where the sand yard is. I wait about 15 minutes before I come to the door and let them back in. To my surprise and horror, they come running back to my house covered in mud. How can this be? I've not let any water in the backyard. I put both mud puppies in their crates to try to minimize any more mud damage to my family room and kitchen and then head out to see what's going on. I walk to where my pool filter is and see the valve had been left open and water is spraying out in turn draining my pool. Okay. My backyard had become a giant mud puddle and a large amount of water had drained from my pool. Here in Texas, it's been consistently over 100 degrees every day here most of the summer and our water bill took a hit. I called the pool guy and told him what was going on. He proceeded to tell me how to shut off the valve and then his only words after that were, oops, I must have left it on. (laughs) I told him all of the mud mess my puppies had made in my house, the huge mud puddle in my backyard, and the drained water from the pool. On top of that, I'm very sick and he's made a huge mess for me to clean up. There were no other words out of his mouth. Me being angry at this point was an understatement. I proceeded to call the company and talk to his supervisor as well as leave a detailed text to them explaining the whole story. What could have been a quiet Wednesday where I could rest from being sick had turned into a huge mess. I requested that they refund me for the service as all the work I had to do was way more expensive than the almost hour he was there. My mom thinks he left the valve on on purpose as he was angry at me for declining the expensive additional service. Part of me really agrees with her. Also, looking at it, if I wasn't home and this happened, I would have so much damage to my yard. The entire pool could have drained into my yard and also others around me. It would have affected a very large amount of things that would have been damaging and possibly drowned my tortoise or the chlorine could have made them sick. 
as their enclosure is outside. What do you think? The question is, am I the ass for reporting my pool guy to his supervisor? Hell no. That's about the minimum of the action that I think you're warranted at right now. You're in legal action territory. And again, this is not legal advice because I have no legal experience whatsoever and I am not qualified to give that. However, if someone had done this to me, there would be some definite action going on and they would be fixing everything to make up for it. Here's the problem. If you have an in-ground pool and and you drain almost all of the water out of it, unless it has a hydrostatic pump underneath it, that pool will pop out of the ground. Don't ask me how I know, but I can tell you it's not pretty and it's really difficult to fix. Almost impossible. There could be more damage than you even know right now, OP. This is, this is something that they are going to have to come inspect or you have an independent inspector come and this seems malicious or or this is ignorance either way it's not okay it's not okay for this guy to be shitey like this and then to have done this kind of damage and take no accountability for it whatsoever you talked to the supervisor you sent them a message but there needs to be more action taken here because there's there's damage to your yard at this point i don't know how much you have invested in your yard if you've done sod or if you've seeded or anything like that but that's potentially damaged they potentially popped your pool out if you don't even know it yet it could still happen after you get water back into it if there's more water in the ground than there is in your pool that's where the whole empty cup in the bathtub thing happens and boop it can it can be really really bad it is definitely worth another phone call to say hey this is unacceptable and not just refund the money but it may be more than that maybe you need to have an independent person come out and survey damage and then talk to an attorney i don't know but this this is 100 not okay for them to do this it's not okay for a service individual to treat you like this and uh it's it's google review worthy i'll tell you that much and if you leave them a review detailing everything that happened there uh, there's a lot more there's a lot better likelihood that they're actually going to do something about it now this is one service tech not the entire company right so i would i would give the company an opportunity to make it right because one person doing something stupid can ruin things for an entire company give them the opportunity to make it right and if they don't then it's time for more drastic action This is, am I the astronaut for telling my wife she was putting her needs before our kids' safety during a severe thunderstorm warning? I'm sure many of you have heard our version before, which involved me up at the double doors, pushing with all of my weight while the wind was trying to blow them in, and Candy Thunder standing in the living room looking at the news like while while they weren't even talking about the weather. Like, gosh dang it. Just she was not taking it nearly as seriously as I was. I swear if you wrote this and you're having me read it on a live they, they thought I wrote it. No. no, it was not me. It was not me. Important backstory information. My wife, let's call her Candy. It doesn't say Candy, it says Jess. I'm just messing with you. My wife, let's call her Jess has been dealing with something that causes severe fatigue and joint pain. Jess is historically the more cautious one between the two of us. Our oldest child went back to school this week, and so everyone needs to get up earlier than normal. So here is where the story starts. It is about 30 minutes after putting the child to sleep. Jess is preparing for bed as well, and a severe thunderstorm watch alert goes out with a possible tornado warning. Outside is lightning show and strong winds visible. I tell Jess it is time to go down to the main floor. We have a two-story house and bedrooms are on the top floor. She is visibly frustrated but agrees. I wake up the children and bring them down to the couch. The whole time we are waiting, Jess is complaining about not being able to get enough sleep and asking, why can't I just go back up to the bed upstairs with the children and come back down if it gets worse? She kept calling it a thunderstorm when I kept saying it is a severe thunderstorm. I kept responding about how that isn't what you do when there's a severe thunderstorm and we need to wait longer. The radar showed a swell of bad weather heading in our direction within the next half hour. Also, the beds are right next to big windows. Reminder, she is normally the cautious one, so it was bothering me that she was downplaying the storm so much. After about three or four times of her doing this, I accused her of putting her need for sleep ahead of the children's safety. I think I said something along the lines of, your need for sleep isn't more important than the kids' safety. Stop downplaying the storm. I didn't say that. 
I, I did not say that in our story. <laughs> she goes, that did not go over well. What followed was a massive tongue lashing about how could I even say that she cares more about herself than the kids? How she is not a bad mom. How she had been so tired that whole day. I told her that I wasn't saying she was a bad mom, but in that moment, she was being selfish with her needs. And that, sorry, the storm doesn't care how tired or sore you are. None of that changes the fact that we were under a severe thunderstorm warning, and I didn't think it was a good idea to have the kids upstairs. Fortunately, the storm pushed north of us and had nothing more come of it in our area. Unfortunately, she is using this as justification that she was right to suggest going upstairs all along. Now that part seems accurate. <laughs> But the storm north of us did result in a tornado. Houses were damaged and news is reporting a small death count. So it could have just as easily been our area. So am I the astronaut for telling my wife to stop being selfish with her need for sleep? Edit. A few people have asked why I didn't just let her go upstairs. I don't have a problem if that's what she wanted to do, but she wanted to bring the kids up with her. And I had a problem with that. Our children are both under six. Edit two, this all took place within 20 to 30 minutes before 9 p.m. The kids hadn't even fallen asleep yet. Edit three, well, this certainly blew up. As many people guessed, I do live in West Michigan where the weather got aggressive Thursday night. I live about 10 minutes south of downtown GR. I have lived in West Michigan my whole life and do not panic every time there is a storm. Last night escalated fast and I brought my kids downstairs as a precaution. Okay, so there are two different questions that were actually asked here. The first question was, am I the astronaut for telling my wife she was putting her needs before our good safety during a severe thunderstorm? And then the last question was, am I the astronaut for telling my wife to stop being selfish with her need for sleep? Uh, so, you know what? Before I give my feedback, let's bring Candy Thunder on to, to talk about what she thinks about this story. Ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder. So I, I don't take storms as seriously as Dusty take storms but he said it was we're talking about op here. he said it was a severe thunderstorm watch with a possible tornado warning and i'm like that that's not the same thing a, wa a, sun a thunderstorm watch um does not come with a possible tornado warning he could there could be a tornado watch at the same time but there's no side of tornado warning with a thunderstorm watch so i feel like he wasn't being like he was escalating the situation to make his point seem more severe Possibly. I don't I don't think it's an ESH. I think it was just he felt like it was going to be a bad storm. But I feel like he could have brought the kids down if something had escalated with the storms. You don't get our kids out of bed unless something I, I, is. I don't get the kids out of bed un until there's there's an imminent threat. However, I do have a plan. And Correct. if there is the threat of severe weather that night, I will make sure that the teens all know yep. and confirm the plan. And I'll confirm with Candy Thunder the plan. Um, I I have trauma. Right. And I, I completely understand and respect that and you go above and beyond when something is happening like when there's severe weather like you you understand weather you look at it but in this point I, I i feel like he went everyone's gonna react differently based on the trauma that they experience with storms right and i feel like he said that he's lived there his whole life he knew what storms what was gonna happen but I don't know. I don't think that he should have called his wife selfish. I don't think there was anything wrong with her going upstairs. If he felt the kids needed to be down there, then keep the kids. But she's she's a grown person. She could go upstairs and right. and be there if that's where she wanted to be. Uh, but but there's this, you know, when it when it comes to the safety of the family though, that that's where that's where I'm with OP on is like it, where yeah, the the storm doesn't care. It doesn't care if you're tired. No. It doesn't care about anything. No, like it, we have that. seen here in Joplin, yes. like the weather do just unspeakable things, and it does not give a single flying f. No, it doesn't matter what you're doing. And uh, weather's and, gonna weather. Yeah, but I I do think that it does it does bring about a tense moment too. Like there's that there's that time whenever if he if he is panicking, like I like I sometimes do panic whenever it's imminent. I can't sleep. I have to stare out the window. I trust my eyeballs and my ears more than I trust the radar. Like I I I know what to listen for now like i legit cannot sleep i will be at the window until that storm has passed um if it is if it is anything severe like we had a storm roll through last night and and it stormed all night long and it right. did not bother me because there was no like severe threat in it so it probably isn't everyone sucks here because you know if she wanted to go up and then let the kids stay down that's one thing but she wanted to take the kids up how we would have handled it in that moment. If I see that this is something that severely bothered you and you felt strongly about it, this is not you holding the front doors and wanting to nail a giant board into my trim. This is something different. But if if you felt in that moment that this weather was going to turn bad, I would trust you more than I would trust myself in that moment. So I would listen to you. And we've been in our storm shelter. Like we've, we have our stuff set up. If something happens, I know 
like who I'm responsible for, you know who you're responsible for. We have our plan. And I go to bed knowing that Dustin is in charge, basically. He's going to handle whatever happens that night with the storm. Yeah. And I think your that's, last name is Storm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. You would think I have some kind of control over it, but I don't. Um, we have we have double doors up yes. front and it was it was pushing them open. That was but the hard it was part. he wanted to nail a giant board across our across the both the front doors and it wouldn't it wouldn't have stopped what the, what was happening. Like it needed people pushing on the doors. But so Dustin held them shut and then the front came through and it was fine. The storm yes. wasn't even that bad. There yeah. was no threat to our family. No, it, it passed and it was fine. There was a th- uh, there was just a threat to our front door. <laughs> and if they blew open it, it would have, would have been wouldn't nothing would have happened. It was it, it's now comical uh, <laughs> at the time. At, it was it was very comical for me at the time. At, at the it was time, very annoying. It for was me. it was a little comical for her, but because I'm also like triggered by severe weather, it was it was a very stressful time for me. Um, but here in this case, I think if Opie had a plan that that Opie and his wife agreed upon, Agre- yes, that plan yes. could have prevented this, and it's probably an ESH for that fact. If they had a plan that they agreed on, then then they could have just followed that plan and everything had been okay. This cake story is from the AITA subreddit and it is titled, Am I the astronaut for making my boyfriend's brother a separate cake for my boyfriend's birthday party? Your boyfriend's brother got a separate cake for the boyfriends. My boyfriend, 26 and I, 23 female, recently moved into our first house together. We decided to throw a party to celebrate his birthday and also our new home. I was in charge of cooking and baking any food for the party, so I made my boyfriend a pretty huge Chantilly. Anybody know how to say that word here? Chantilly? So I made my boyfriend a pretty huge Chantilly cake since it's his favorite and also his mom's, who I've been trying to get in favor of lately. Since I knew the original cake wasn't going to be safe for my boyfriend's brother to eat, he's allergic to dairy and can't eat strawberries. I decided to test out a new recipe I learned in my baking class. It was just a small chocolate cake, but I didn't want him to feel left out and we had our other guest attending who might also be dairy free for all I know. I thought I was being thoughtful, but the night of the party, my boyfriend's mom kept giving me the stank eye and whenever the party calmed down, she pulled me aside and told me I was a whore for trying to seduce her son. I was to be a fly on the wall. You whore trying to seduce my boy with that strawberry cake? chocolate cake of yours. I'm the only one in this family who deduces paper with cake. You should know this. At first, I thought she meant my boyfriend, but no, she was insinuating me making an extra cake for my boyfriend's brother was me trying to flirt. Now, obviously, that's not the case. For one, he just turned 19 and that's weird. But also, I'm very much in love with my boyfriend and would never do something like that, especially not with his brother. Even after explaining to her why, she still kept calling me names. My boyfriend took my side and said there was nothing wrong with what I did, but it's been a couple of days and it seems like he's starting to believe his mom's words. No! No, 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 no. I didn't make the cake for any other reason other than being kind, since I understand how it feels to be left out during parties when it comes to treats. But with her reaction, I'm starting to feel like I may have overstepped. Am I the astronaut? No. <laughs> uh, this is Mummy Dearest trying to stir up shit. The cake just happened to be the thing that she chose as the ammo. If anything, if she really cared about both of her sons, she would appreciate the thoughtfulness that you put forth, and this would have gained you favor with her. She didn't want to like you. She wanted ammo to use against you to turn her son, your boyfriend, against you. And the shite part is it's starting to work. If he's starting to believe her... You have bigger problems on your hands because this is just the first wave of her attack. There will be more waves. This was the first battle and you thought you won, but it's backtracking now. She's playing chess. It's not good. You got him. Well, I would have a serious conversation with the boyfriend here and be like, why Why are you starting to believe this now? What's changed? Is it just her chirping in your ear? And what is she saying that now has you convinced that me making a cake was flirting? Absolute garbage. The question here was, am I the astronaut for making my boyfriend's brother a separate cake for my boyfriend's birthday party? Hell no. Hell no. Wheel That's the wrong button. Sorry, they're close together. You get the wheel of thunder. No, not the... Not the yeah, not the asshole at all. It's this is ridiculous. This is a ploy. Don't 
let your boyfriend fall for it. This is a time where he needs to prove to you that he's not going to be puppeteered by his mumsy and be a mama's boy. This is also a pivotal moment in your relationship because either he's going to allow himself to be manipulated and that's how the entire relationship is going to go and it's going to end up in shambles or he's going to stand up to her and be like, quit trying to stir the pot, mom. Quit trying to create shit. Quit looking for problems. People who look for problems will always find them and if she's always looking for problems, she's always going to be chirping in his ear trying to stir shit up. He has to draw a line now. You know what? Let's get some thoughts from Caden Thunder on this. Ladies and gentlemen, Caden Thunder. The mom, either she's got something going on or she's trying to break them up for reasons that we don't know. I'm sure there's more to the story with some for some reason the mom doesn't like the girlfriend but yeah I don't think that she was trying to seduce his little brother with a cake. I don't think so. Sounds like mom needs a snapping turtles in her shower. You gotta, you gotta get them when they least expect it. You put snapping turtles in her shower. What's she gonna do then? She's gonna have to get out of the shower. Caden Thunder, the shower is no place for a test you die. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Moira line. We had to go look it up and make sure I was using the right word. <laughs> This story from the AITA subreddit is, am I the astronaut for refusing to ask my parents to take down a memorial to my late daughter? Mm -hmm. Trigger warning for infant loss. I, 28 female, gave birth to twins two years ago. My babies were seemingly born healthy, but before we could be discharged, my daughter Indy suffered a seizure and never got to come home. For eight months, she'd go from getting better to worse again, until the day came where she would never get better again. She slipped away peacefully in my arms, and it's something I will never forget. Our whole family was devastated by the loss of Indy. My in-laws are crafty people and made a beautiful memorial frame for Indy. They kept one themselves and gave them to my husband and I and my parents. My parents display theirs in their living room so everyone can see when they visit them. They also have candles directly underneath it. They light the candles for my twin's birthday and Indy's anniversary. My sister gave birth to her first child back in May, and she named her daughter Indy. I'll confess that I've been unable to look at it as some beautiful tribute because it's difficult to hear the name used for another little girl and their family other than my Indy, but I have kept that to myself. Now, a few months in, my sister is bothered by the fact our parents kept Indy's memorial up when her Indy will see it whenever she's there. She said it's very morbid and seems gross to do to her daughter who will grow up feeling very weird with her name on a memorial at her grandparents like that. Then why'd you give her the name? My parents told her she should have thought of that before she named her daughter Indy. Thank you, parents. My sister was like, she doesn't own that name and I should be allowed to use the name I love. When our parents didn't give in to her demands, she came to me. She told me it bothers her and she knows it will bother her daughter in years to come. She wanted me to tell our parents to take down the, the memorial. I refused to entertain her idea. She pushed and I told her I did not want my daughter's memory tucked away forever. My sister yelled and told me that my Indy is gone and there's a living, breathing Indy who deserves to feel comfortable at her grandparents' house. I told my sister to get the F out of my face. My sister said, I was a total a-hole for putting the memory of Indy before her Indy. She also said it will only confuse my son in the future when his twin's tribute becomes messed up in his only maternal cousin. She said, I might not like that she used the name Indy, but she's not changing her daughter's name for me, and I should have the decency to care about her child. This bitch, I... Oh, what a shit person. Why? So it sounds like we didn't address this in the story, or OP didn't address this in the story, but it sounds like she did not get permission or did not talk to OP, uh, or Opie's husband about using the name Indy. She just done did it. And then is like, I need you to take that memorial down because I chose this name. No, if you don't like it, change your daughter's name. How long is this in? She said a few months in. Was that right? Now a few months in. So she's only a few months old. The kid's only a few months old. The obvious solution to every level-headed person on the gosh heckin' planet is to not use that name. Why the hell would you choose that name? It was not a beautiful tribute. If it was a tribute, you wouldn't have a problem with the actual tribute that's on the freaking wall. This was not a tribute. I don't know why she just liked the name. And her using it instead of it being a tribute was actually her being shitty. She's like, oh, well, they didn't get to use it, so I get to use it. Screw you. You don't have any say in the memorial for other children 
for the children of other people that are up in a house that isn't yours. You don't have jack shit authority on any of that. And thus far, this woman's behavior has made her a straight up ass con. One, you're right. I am triggered by it. This is horse shit. This is a terrible person. Lock her out from your lives completely. And bravo to the parents for saying hell no. Should have thought of that before you chose that name. Thank you so much for saying that. But there is going to come a point because she says she's not going to budge on this either where they're going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. They're probably going to have to ice her out too. She's on, This kid is only a few months old. Change the name. It's the obvious choice here. Or she can lose her family. Those are the two choices. Change the kid's name because it was a dumbass choice in the first place that you were being cute, not thinking about other people, only thinking about herself and how she thought the name was cute and they didn't get to use it. Screw you again. Mm. Shit person. We're going red flags just to make my background red because that matches how I'm feeling right now. This is just a terrible person. I'm sorry that you had to go through all of this, but especially that. Some things in life you can control. Being a shitty person is something you can. She chose to be this. And it's garbage. <sighs> Am I the astronaut for being irritated about a cake? I can tell you right now, that's for feeling something. For being irritated about a cake, it depends on what you do with it. You can't be an asshole for feeling something. We've covered that. Let's see Let's see what OP does with it here. I saw a similar post on another subreddit, and the responses were very surprising. Since I had a recent similar interaction, I thought I would ask, am I the astronaut? I recently celebrated a birthday, and my parents offered to host a small barbecue with some friends and family on Sunday. Edit here for clarity. By host, they let us use their backyard. We did all the work for the party prep and planning. My my dad texted me a few weeks before and told keyword told me that he was making my cake for the BBQ. I politely said thank you, but that I already had plans for what I was making for myself for the party. He tried to insist and I said, how about you make your cake for our family dinner on Saturday? He agreed. I didn't hear anything further. Info here. I own a baking business and have made my own birthday desserts for almost seven years. It's one of the only times I get to bake for myself. What I picked had some personal significance. Fast forward to a week before the barbecue. I get asked if we can move our family dinner at home to Friday instead because some additional family would be in town. I begrudgingly agreed and rearranged my plans to make it work. Before I could say anything further, I was told we'd go to a local restaurant they wanted to take the family to. Okay, not what I would have picked again, but fine. The dinner comes, and as we're packing up leftovers, my dad says in front of everyone, I made you one hell of a cake for Sunday, and it was like a record scratch. I said, pardon? The family dinner is tonight, so I thought cake was tonight after dinner. He goes, nope, for Sunday with all your friends. I said calmly that I had already bought $50 worth of ingredients I had and that we had discussed this over text and we agreed that his cake would be for our family gathering. He told me to store the ingredients away and he had it taken care of. Between not getting to pick the restaurant, the change in day, and now this, I was probably visibly livid. My husband stepped in at that point and said we could have his cake after dinner and that it was already discussed and it was my birthday and what I wanted. I felt like I looked like a total bitch in front of everyone. We got back to the house and my aunt pulled me aside and reminded me that my dad had spent hours on the cake, which made me feel even worse. I ate a piece and went home feeling like I was stewing in anger. I got four hours of sleep and spent my birthday feeling tired and irritated. So, am I the astronaut for pushing back and insisting that we stick to the original plan? Hell no! You know what? It's awesome. It's awesome when the people who are supposed to love and care for you are like, you know what? You stated clearly what you want. I'm going to do the opposite of it. Let me tell you what you want. You want me to make you a cake? Me who doesn't own a baking business, who hasn't been doing this for seven years? Me who's going to bake whatever the hell I want? You want me to make your cake? You don't want what you say you want. You don't have personal preferences. I'm your father. I know better. I know what you want better than you know what you want. I made you. So next time you could just be like, look, I'll just celebrate by myself. I won't ask to use your backyard as the venue. I won't include you in any way, shape or form. I'll just do my own thing because at least I'll get to do my own thing and do what I want. Ladies and gentlemen, Miles Griff. Oh my God, it's Miles.
everybody. This kind of stuff bothers me too. And it's not even just like people trying to take control of different situations, but also just like the changing of plans last minute without any kind of warning is always a pet peeve. <laughs> um, Are you OCD about plans? Not to the level that I, I am. I know some. Yeah, I don't think I'm at your level. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm definitely not at my dad's level. He's crazy about like plans have to be right. But I do have an issue when plans change like two seconds before they're supposed to happen, mm-hmm. because what am I supposed to do to <laughs> prepare for the plans now? Honestly, I probably would have just said, all right, you do whatever you want. And I probably would just still do my plans. If, especially if I was the one that was going to put together everything for a cake on a specific day, I'm not just going to throw my hands up and walk away. I'm still going to carry out my plan that he wants to bring an extra cake. Good for him. Okay, this story is titled, Am I the astronaut for divorcing my wife because she tried to take me away from my family? Me and my wife met at a nightclub going out with mutual friends. Immediately after seeing each other and talking, we knew we liked each other. After five years of knowing each other, I proposed and we got married and everything was going well. Keep in mind that I am so close to my family and we go to a lot of my family events. Right after we got married, she started acting kind of weird. I noticed when we would show up to these family events, if I would walk away to talk to any of my family members, I would invite her to come with me, but she would just look annoyed and say no, and that it was okay. This happened often. Well, that's not a great sign. She pulled me aside after a while and told me she felt left out, even though everyone was trying to talk to her and invite her to play Uno or other games and genuinely try to have a nice conversation with her, but she would just either not talk or just have an attitude the whole time. I was pretty confused as to how she felt left out if my family and I tried our best to make her feel comfortable. I tried to understand where she was coming from, and we left and went out to dinner. After that night, I tried to invite her to my cousin's party, but she just tried to talk me out of going and to stay home even though we had nothing to do all day. She started to ramble about how she wanted to move to Washington instead of being in California, and I just looked at her in confusion and told her I wasn't moving away from my friends and family here. She got mad and started saying how she didn't like how close close I was with my family and that she did not want me to hang out with them at all anymore. That's pretty rash. We got into a huge argument and that's when I asked for a divorce. Oh, that escalated really quickly. She burst into tears, begging me not to divorce her. I just walked away. We ended up getting a divorce. No way I am choosing a girl I've known for five years over my family. I'm just glad I didn't sign a prenup. Am I the ask not for getting divorced? Glad you didn't sign a prenup. Uh, I think I understand it. I think I... Wow, that 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 was like, yeah, we got a problem. Boom. It's just the escalation of this was was wild. I think, I think the thing that I would have liked to have seen a little bit differently in there is diving into the why. Obviously, it's not okay that she feels that way. Obviously, her trying to drive a wedge between them, not okay. Obviously, the way she was acting toward his family, not okay. Lots of red flags there. Lots of things that are not okay. But rather than diving into the root issues and trying to figure out, okay, why? Why do you want this? Why do you feel this way? Is this something we can resolve? It was just, look, these things are deal breakers. I'm out. And after being together for five years, that seems awfully rash. I'm not saying it wasn't warranted because the things that she was doing were that bad. But as a married couple, I think there, there's at least in my opinion here, in my singular opinion here, there's an obligation to try to resolve things before calling it quits, no matter how bad they may be. There are deal breaker things, but knowing why would be nice. Even for us just hearing the story, like why, why, why does she not want him around the family? I know that she doesn't like how close he is to them, but what, why those are the, I wish we had answers for those things. I wish he had pushed harder for answers to those things. Am I the asking off for divorcing my wife because she tried to take me away from my family? I don't think that's the question. I think it's, am I the asking off for not trying harder to resolve or get to the root of the issues before, before going straight to divorce? The, the path to divorce was super short here. And I think think you definitely could have done this differently maybe should have done this differently i don't at, at minimum i don't put you on four because i think you could have done this differently and explored it a little bit not that it wasn't a deal breaker not that it could be salvaged but I don't think you know if it could be salvaged because you never dug to the root, the core of the issue. Never dug to figure out what the real issue was and why she felt this way. Also, why she felt this way suddenly. You've been together five years. Why all of a sudden is this a problem? That diving into that would be a good thing to to try to figure out. Now, obviously, um, you felt strongly enough about it to be like, 
done. Um, and she begged you not to divorce her, but it doesn't sound like she gave an explanation trying to smooth things over. So it, it was a non-starter. It sounds like it's, it's weird. 